So another Muse video, this is becoming like a Muse devlog at this point or something, but um, I do have a few new data points from the device and then also I've had a look at how the app works with the new Gen 2 version of the Muse S compared to the experience that I had before, which is better and I think I'll start with that. So if you um, look at what I've got on screen here, this is basically from a sleep session that I had pretty much this last week. I hadn't used this for literally since I had the last band and even then it was probably like six months. That I didn't, didn't use it so um, I, but just because I had disconnection problems with the uh, sensors but on the new band as you can see here there's like there is a, a recording across the whole night and the the way I kind of looked at this was I actually put both bands on at the same time so I actually have the gen 1 version still so I used that and mind monitor to track raw data I won't go into detail of what mind monitor is because I've explained that in, in my previous videos so that way I can kind of get a rough idea of what the uh, spectrum data looks like alongside what they're showing here in terms of sleep stages and deep sleep intensity and it generally looks like it's it's pretty spot on I think if you look at this one it's showing that I had I was in REM state for at least the last hour and I know that's true because I woke up from a pretty weird dream so that's definitely spot on the other deep sleep intensity deep sleep's usually quite easy to spot on these devices because um, you'll just see massive delta waves and you, they've got quite a good uh, graph on that that shows how deep you are sleeping which is something that you can't do with a lot of other uh, devices that don't track EEG so other stuff in here as I've gone through before sleep position so that looks like it was not disconnected anywhere, good um, consistency of data, and then they've got heart rate and stillness. I'm not a massive fan of these graphs because you can't really zoom in on them. They're scaled a bit weird as well for me. Uh, if you look at the heart rate one, I would prefer to have it so that it was kind of like um, normalized across that range rather than all kind of bunched up and narrow like this. But I think the logic behind that is probably that if you did have, for example, if you had that deep sleep intensity kind of graph for heart rate and stillness, it might cause people alarm because, they, you know, they, it looked like your heart rate is just going up and down like crazy but obviously you know when you're sleeping your heart rate does drop and does rise at different stages of sleep and i think most people are aware of that so i don't think they need to have have it all squashed up like this i think they should spread it out a bit more and then even with the stillness it's a bit also flat i just think there's a lot more that they can show there than what's on this dashboard you can't rotate this either so you're always stuck in portrait mode so if you wanted to click on one of these cards and expand them out you can't do that so what I've been working on is producing a dashboard the way I'd like to see it using the data that I can collect from mine monitor so that's what I'll show you now and oh yeah quickly just before I get to that there's that sleep score at the top which I think I've mentioned before is is um I don't, I don't really understand where it's derived from how it's calculated this is kind of a bit of a weird trend that is just across the board in wearables these random sleep scores recovery scores rest scores they're kind of just I find them to be like pointless because they never really tell you you know exactly how they calculate they're way too vague about it and this is the worst one of the worst ones actually because there's literally nothing to tell you how that score's derived so uh, there's another thing that I'm not a fan of so this is how I look at the data from the muse myself when I get the data from mine monitor and I know this this isn't perfect I, the the way their graphs are scaled and people that got OCD about axes labeling and things like that are <laughs> probably not going to like this but it's um I, I still think it's it's a much better view than what I get from the Muse app. So what we've got here is a hypnogram at the top. Now, I used deep learning for this. So this is calculated using a neural network. It's a bit of trial and error to get this right. So in my first video, I think I was using audio visualizers to kind of look at the data. And now we're, we're getting into deep learning and neural networks. So it's, it's getting pretty complicated. That's a hypnogram. Underneath that, then I've got the spectrogram, um, which I've explained in, in previous videos. This is like one of the best ways I, I like to look at. Um, brainwave data so it's like a time frequency plot um, and this is good it shows you everything you want to see really it shows it, that whole thing around deep sleep intensity you can see here where the delta wave peaks are in red and then also you you know if there's problems with the signal it'll show quite clearly in here you'll just see kind of waves all over the place and then right at the bottom I've got like a zoomed in view just for uh, deep sleep intensity which is pretty much the same as what they've got in Muse for that um, I think that's useful to see and call out uh, in terms of uh, checking your quality of deep sleep. And then the other line graph that I've got above it is the accelerometer and gyroscope. So you can see movement spikes. This, I think, is a better way to view movement than um, the stillness chart that they show in the Muse app because you can see 
um, where the kind of dominant areas are um, across the sleep. So you can see when I'm in deep sleep, this is completely flat. Also, I can look at uh, where I was in REM sleep and then see if there's spikes there, and that probably indicates sleep apnea or snoring. So there's there's a lot of information that you can get even just from uh, the, from the movement sensors. So you could easily you know spend quite a bit of time just looking at the data from that itself, really. And then these are a couple of other spectrograms that I've got from meditation I did. This, these are actually failed lucid dream attempts. And so you can see quite a lot of alpha brainwave activity. And these were done um, kind of like halfway through the night. So it's like 3, 4 a.m. And I've never been able to replicate that amount of um, alpha brain activity from meditating any other time of the day. So there's definitely something in there around circadian cycles and this time of day being the most optimum one to choose for uh, wake induced lucid dreaming so there's different types of meditation that uh, create different types of brainwave activity and you will only really see that level of detail if you have a spectrogram like this to look at and um, yeah just more detail around the brain frequencies so with muse um, as a reminder they don't show you brain frequencies directly they've got these other metrics is like calm neutral and i can't remember what the other one is and they don't directly relate back to frequencies because it's more complicated than that. I think the way they've cr done it is create an algorithm based on research that they've done with experts on meditation. So a lot of it's are monks putting muse band on a monk, seeing what brain frequencies come back and um, doing some deep learning and modeling um, based on that information. So it isn't like it's completely arbitrary and useless. It is good information when, when they show you that data. But they don't really allow you to export it, so that's not a great thing. And then, um, as I say, it would be good to look at um, brain frequency information alongside that. But either way, this example I have around these spectrograms for failed lucid dream attempts, you wouldn't be able to see this with any clarity in the Muse app. And then what would be interesting to see, and I haven't got to that stage yet, but to see exactly what a lucid dream looks like on here would be quite interesting. Um, it might look, It might not look too much different from just REM phase sleep or something like astral projection, which is actually happens at a different phase of sleep. So lucid dreaming happens usually in REM phase and um, things like out of body experience, they tend to happen in um, NREM sleep, which is a different, different phase altogether, <clears throat> which is pretty interesting. So yeah, both of those on this spectrogram is something I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing. Now this won't be the first time a device has been used to find REM stages and attempt to trigger a lucid dream. Although there isn't many of these out there. In fact, the only one I could find was this uh, Hypnodyne Z-Max, which by most accounts is a pretty solid device. Although I haven't seen um, any kind of user feedback on that lucid dreaming feature that it has. Probably because it's outside most people's price brackets for that kind of thing. These are like run into the thousands. But they literally uh, detect REM phases and they have LEDs and I think even a motor built into here. I don't know if it's got a speaker, it might do. But yeah, they, they have some algorithms and technology in there to trigger lucid dreams. It's probably worth checking out, but like I say, it's, it's outside most piece, people's uh, prize band. But I still think based on that, it's kind of worth trying to repurpose what we can uh, with the Muse. This video they made was pretty cool. I don't think it's a direct advertisement for the Hypnodyne, but it's uh, kind of a prop they used for something on the Xbox Series X. The Hypnodyne themselves do have a lot of videos on YouTube just around on how to use their product and EEG in general, which I think are pretty informative, so those are worth looking at. So I haven't mentioned anything that you'd find on things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and that's because when it comes to lucid dream technology, those platforms are notorious for false starts and uh, just general scams. This is one example, which is iBand. You can see they had like a million pounds worth of uh, backing. But if you look at the comment section here, it's just like people that are really disgruntled because, you know, they've probably been kind of like backing this for years and they haven't had anything um, come out of it yet. So it's just a warning for you if you're, if you're looking to back any kind of new technology that's coming up in this space just be careful of what's on kickstarter it has worked out for some products so the remy mask which is kind of a beginner low tier cheap and cheerful device is kind of designed to pitch to a market that didn't really exist so that kind of low cost lucid dream technology usually the price points are quite high for this kind of thing so they, they did quite well in kind of pitching it in a different price bracket but yeah when it comes to these kind of top end devices where they're saying they're going to track eeg or anything like that just be wary so aside from EEG-based devices for tracking and triggering lucid dreams, there are other approaches that people have tried before. In fact, in one of my videos before, I showed how you could potentially do it using just basic Arduino 
um, tools that uh, track eye movement. So when you're sleeping and you're in rapid eye movement, um, you can track that using uh, infrared light. So that's one approach that's been used several times uh, quite successfully. The trouble with those devices is that, um, and, and people that have had lucid dreams with these technologies will understand what I'm saying is that by the time they trigger you when you're in a dream, you're already in some kind of narrative to the point where whatever trigger mechanism they use, if it's an LED light or some kind of audio cue, it gets incorporated into that dream. And that would happen with probably with these EEG-based devices as well. But by the time you're moving your eyes that much that uh, those uh, eye sensors are picking it up, you know, you're looking around you, there's obviously something going on in that dream that's pretty active. Um, and it's also been proven that as you're looking around in a dream, your eyes physically move in the same way. So if you're looking left in a dream, you'll physically look left. And that's been proven using MRI scans. Yeah, like I say, those eye tracking devices, you're moving your eyes around a lot. There's some narrative going on that, to the point where, and you're already pretty delirious when you're in a dream anyway. So it's going to be difficult to get you know, some, a level of alertness from that. It'll be a bit of a hit and hope situation. Whereas I think hopefully with EEG, uh, you should be able to track it much earlier on in REM phase. And then hopefully you can get lucidity way before things start really kicking off. And, you know, there's some weird storyline going on that you get caught up in. A few people have asked me how I've got on with that Arduino-based tracker, which I use the uh, Circuit Playground Express for. The issue I had with this was the mask, the nylon mask, just doesn't react well with my skin. So it's just shredding my eyelids. Uh, even with COVID-19, I've seen a similar thing with the uh, you know, the medical face masks that they have. But I seem to work a lot better with cotton, so I'll probably have another go with another type of mask. I just haven't got around to fixing something up for that, but I think this is a good reason to uh, kind of get that back up and running again because it would be good to do that in tandem um, with the EEG data that I've got and just see if, you know, there's any correlations there. So now I've got the sleep dashboard up and running, I can use that. The next phase is to try and track this in real time rather than retrospectively after a night's sleep. So I basically hit a wall now with Mind Monitor. So I'm going to have to look at different approaches of streaming the data onto a PC. So we do have a couple of options for that. So that's what I'm going to look at next. One of the advantages that I've got now is that the uh, that neural network that I'm using to track sleep stages it works on quite short epochs, so we're looking at kind of like a minute, two minutes worth of data, and that gives us near enough real-time information on what sleep stage we're in. So if we can do that for REM, then we can potentially you know, set some kind of audio queue up and see how that works. So just to show you some examples of the challenges that I've got with the Muse data is the, the signal to noise ratio isn't anywhere near as good as what you get with clinical devices. So you can see on the left, quite strong signals across all frequencies, or most frequencies, whereas uh, for the Muse, it's, it's much weaker. So when I'm doing any kind of data modeling, I need to kind of account for that and just make sure things are normalized so that it's all balanced out. But yeah, once that's sorted and I have a, a clear way to stream the data that kind of stays connected throughout the night, we will be in a good place. There's a few more details on my website. I've done a write-up on pretty much everything I've gone through. And there's some links to some other resources for things like the dashboard and what I use to put that together in Python. So if you want more info, uh, head over there for that. And then, yes, stand by for another video once I've figured out how to stream news data and a way to trigger lucid dreaming, hopefully.